So my question to you is, if your goal is to play like fast, heavy metal riffs, then why are you spending a bunch of time learning like scales and chords and memorizing a bunch of theoretic ideas? I've been playing guitar for over 20 years and it wasn't until like a year and a half ago that I finally asked myself that same question. If Matt Heafy's not playing pentatonic scales to a metronome and Dimebag Daryl never learned the sus2 add 9 suspended 17 arpeggio on the third position, then why the fuck am I? Because all I want to do is write fast, heavy riffs like this. In no way did I refer to the pentatonic scale when I wrote that riff. A lot of theoretic ideas that guitar gurus and guitar teachers deem important for beginners to learn is just not necessary when you're trying to learn how to play like fast metal riffs. As a blues guitarist learning the pentatonic scales in every single position and every single key on the fretboard and memorizing that stuff is absolutely necessary. Or if you were trying to learn like ACDC style like open chord riffs or campfire style acoustic playing guitar, then memorizing a bunch of open chords would definitely benefit you. But if all you want to do is play like fast, badass metal riffs, then you're basically just wasting your time with all that stuff. Probably 87% of like the theoretic ideas that your local guitar teacher named Randy, who once opened for Blue Oyster Cult, is gonna teach you is a waste of time and that's just the reality of it. It's like if you went to college to be an entrepreneur but then you were forced to take like biology classes, it just doesn't make sense and it's wasting your time. And I don't know about you but I just don't have that much time in my day to waste. I have a wife and kids and responsibilities and a bunch of shit going on to where I don't wanna spend 87% of my time on 87% of the shit that is not necessary to reach my goals. And everything can be simplified in three steps. So that's what this video is about. This is my three step process on how to write amazing badass metal riffs on the spot. Let's get into it. So first step is gonna be to learn, practice, and master the essential techniques that go into making a great metal riff. So the most common ones are gonna be down picking and palm muting. Aggressive alternate picking. Tremolo picking. Power chord riffing more for thrash metal. Pinch harmonic. And then drone riffing for like the kind of 2000s metalcore like As I Lay Dying style riffs. And I'm sure I'm missing a bunch so go ahead and put them in the comments whatever you guys can think of. So that's going to be first but as a beginner if you're just starting to play guitar your first like two to four months should just be focused on learning the first four that I had talked about which are down picking, palm muting, string skipping, and aggressive alternate picking. So the second step is gonna be learn some of your favorite metal riffs from the bands that you like to listen to. And this is a crucial step for obvious reasons, but specifically you want to pay attention to how those techniques that you just learned incorporate into these riffs and how the style riff that you like uses these techniques to create amazing music. So there's a few ways that you can learn riffs and songs. First way is to learn from just listening to it and playing it by ear. This is probably not the best option for somebody that's new, mainly because there's kind of a lot that goes into producing a song. So there's a lot of different guitar tracks. It's kind of hard to differentiate like what guitar is playing what, especially when you incorporate like drums and bass and vocals and whatever else may be in the song. It's kind of hard to hear exactly what like one guitar specifically is doing. They do have apps these days to where you can take each individual instrument and um, split it up to where it's, you can hear just the guitar, or just the bass, or just the vocals. Uh, but I still probably wouldn't recommend this way at first. If you do have a great ear for music, then eventually this might be the route that you go and the best way for you to learn 
riffs and it is a great exercise for anybody to practice but it's probably not the most efficient way to learn riffs at least in the beginning so the second way to learn some of your favorite riffs is to just watch somebody play them and then play back what you see which could be a good option if you're somebody like me who is good at like watching and doing and imitating what somebody does I actually had one of my guitar teachers when I was younger used to get pissed at me because he would show me what he was going to teach me that day and then I would just play it real quick and he's like, what the fuck am I going to teach you for the next hour? And then I'm like, I don't know. Um, so that is a good option, especially these days with YouTube. I mean, you can find most like popular riffs, like a close up of either the guitarist playing it or teaching it or just like a fan or a YouTube playing it close up or teaching it. And you can also like slow the videos down if you go I think in the right hand bottom right hand corner to the settings you can slow the video down so you can see it like played half speed to make it easier so that's a good option and the third option would be to learn songs from tab which I would probably argue that's the best way to do it tabs are very simple to read that's always the way that I've learned songs and riffs and that's generally the way that people that I knew growing up that were really good at learning other people's songs, they kind of just use the tab because there's people out there that generally have a passion for like just listening to their favorite riffs and then like tabbing them out and they do a great job. I mean, there's going to be a lot of guitarists out there that say that tabs are wrong, but I would argue these days with like the ability to rate and how good these tab programs are that you can generally find something that's going to be as close as it's going to get to accurate. It's really hard to determine. Like sometimes it's recorded differently versus like the way they play it live. And sometimes there's like multiple guitars playing the same exact thing. So it's kind of hard to determine like what exactly is going on. So I would argue that a quality tab for like a popular riff, that you find on like Songster or, or like Ultimate Guitar Tab is going to be as close as you're going to get to playing the song correctly. Um, with that being said, don't worry about if it's 100% accurate or if there's like a note off or like you're not playing it in the same exact position. There's a lot of different ways to play stuff on the guitar with lots of different octaves. So don't stress too much as if you're playing it exactly the way that the guitarist wrote it originally. Generally what I do is I'll just find the tab the best tab with the best ratings and then I will listen through the riff or the song and then if it sounds right I'll learn it that way and I don't really care if there's other people out there that say well it's not hammer on pull off that's not the right notes it's, that's not the right position it doesn't matter if it sounds right to me then I learn it so the third step is to learn one of the seven modes of music on just the bottom three strings here and don't get discouraged because I'm telling you to learn some music theory it's very very basic simple idea you don't need to learn much all you need to understand is that there's a difference between a half step interval like between one and two frets or a whole step interval which is two frets apart the aeolian mode is a good one to learn it's a natural minor scale as well it's the same same scale and it's used in metal frequently so that's a good one or you could do some research and try to find one of the other seven modes that sounds better to you or one that you like a little bit more and then learn that one and I would just learn one at first eventually you want to learn all of them but just start off with one and like I said it's basically half steps and whole steps is what it's made up of it's two half steps and five whole steps is basically what makes up all of these scales just in different spots so if you just learn the half step intervals then you know that the rest are going to be whole steps so you know the entire scale at that point and if you learn it in a drop tuning because we're only learning the bottom three strings these two strings right here are the same so you only have to learn it on two strings and then you know all three and a lot of metal riffs use just those bottom three strings so you can really do a lot with just learning one scale on those bottom three strings and understanding it so when you learn this learn it to where the root note is this uh, low open string here. so whatever tuning you're in if you're in like drop D or drop C sharp like I am right now then drop C sharp is gonna be your root note so you can continue to come back to that anchor off of that root note which a lot of popular metal riffs do that.
And then you can also incorporate other notes that work in that scale as well into your riffs, but you're able to come back to that root note very simply just by playing an open note. So now that you know the essential techniques that go into making a great metal riff, you understand how these techniques are used in a lot of the riffs that you really love because you learned some of those riffs, and now you understand what notes go together to make a good sounding riff on the fretboard on just those bottom three strings. It's time to like put all these ideas together. So just take these three concepts and just start creating your own riffs and your own music with them. I'm currently in the process of creating a five week program that basically teaches you all of these ideas in depth. And if you guys wanna sign up, the link below will take you to the sign up sheet to where you can be put on the waiting list and get emailed as soon as it comes out here in a few weeks or a couple months. And anybody on this waiting list is going to get the best price that I'm going to give for this program. So it definitely is worth it.